Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, good evening. Am I audible? Hello. Dharan Dharan. Am I audible? Okay, so let's start the class. Now, welcome to the week five of the live interactive session of the fabrication techniques for MEMS based sensor, a clinical perspective. The course is being taught by Professor Hardik Jitendra Pandya of IISC Bangalore, and I am the teaching assistant for the course. My name is Vikas Pandey. This is something about me. Uh, you can access more about me. Uh, from the from my portfolio web page, the schedule for this class is Tuesday 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. The link remains the same. All the recording of these classes are also available on the YouTube channel mentioned here, or you can even write to me for any query on this email. Okay, so moving further, let's take. Uh, some problems related to the uh, topic being taught in the class. Okay, which of the following statement is or are correct? DRI. Remember what is DRI? It is D. D. Reactive. Ion. And remember, in the previous class, we talked about how, uh, what kind of profile it makes and these things. So it provides a large spec ratio etching capability. The second is, it is in multiple directions within the substrate. Deep RIA enables faster etch rates and the formation of deep etch substrate. And it's it uses chemical to etch out surfaces so uh, since we have discussed many times again we will see okay so remember these are some of the deep array etch profiles and we saw the first thing that uh, like the best thing that it can do is that it can create high spec ratio structures so this is correct and we want incorrect right this is correct it etches in multiple directions within within the substrate this is uh, doubtful okay deep ri enables faster etch rates and the formation of deep etch substrates this is also correct deep ri uses chemicals to etch out surfaces so B. This is the incorrect answer. Fine. So let's move on to the next problem. Problem 2. Why an insulating layer, uh, example SiO2 or polysilicon, is deposited over microheater pattern? Okay. Like usually this is done, and why is this done? First, to reduce the temperature at the surface of the insulator where the heat will be used. The statement itself uh, seems wrong. Like if we are using heat, why we want to reduce it? Okay, to provide uniform heating, to stop the heat from sp spreading from the microheater layer to the surface. Again, this and uh, one and C, they outrightly seem incorrect, right? So the option can be B or D, right? And uh, certainly we want uniform heating. And in fact, this is the reason we do. Okay, like if you see the heat profile of the microheater taken from, these are taken from uh, different papers. You can refer to these papers also if you wish. Okay, so here you see when uh, the heat profile is taken, very uniform heat is being distributed over the area 
and this is because of the depositions that are being done over it okay so uh, the reason for using sio2 is sio2 or polysilicon like in this case you see a polysilicon was decorated polysilicon is nothing but amorphous silicon or something that don't uh, silicon that that don't have crystallinity in it like there will be no one 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 zero zero as such for the whole uh, material <laughs> for the whole material there will be no such thing like one 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 two one or oh, sorry one 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 zero zero or one one zero plane but uh, that for small areas there will be and overall it is amorphous in nature okay or sio2 can be deposited so they are generally done so that the heat is not concentrated in some area but a uniformity is there along with that one more thing is used that the structure itself is made something not very uniform so that because you see that uh, if you see these two images uh, this a and b what is shown here uh, though something has been used still in the center the area uh, the heat is more compared to outside though the structures are quite uniform this is because even though they are quite uniform but in this area the heat dissipation is not uh, that well okay so sometimes it is even done that in the central area uh, less less density of the heater patterns are there and then at different areas like outside area you can have more dense patterns like uh, in this case also you see in the central area the glow is more uh, the glow uh, like <laughs> this is a uh, ir mapping of it so the ir radiation is more that means there is more heat in it okay so it is used to provide uniform heating so it will uh, be able to distribute the heat throughout the heater glass wafer to silicon bonding can be done by plasma bonding direct wafer bonding by using adhesive or anodic bonding see uh, remember about uh, plasma bonding plasma bonding in is in which the substrate or the silicon in this case and the glass okay both are treated in plasma first there is plasma treatment for both of them and then they are brought together and not exactly silicon and glass whatever material is there the plasma uh, after the plasma treatment they will bond together direct wafer bonding is in case where two things uh, two different material or wafers are brought together and with pressure they will bond by using adhesive is in which adhesive is some kind of adhesive is used in anodic bonding there is some current being uh, the voltage being used okay so uh, for all the type of wafer bondings i have uh, made a table okay you can uh, refer to this if you wish like there are two uh, if we talk about wafer bonding there are two type of wafer bonding one is in which there will be no intermediate layer and another one is in which there will be an intermediate layer like supporting layer or adhesive kind of thing okay so for no intermediate layer there are two fusion and anodic okay for intermediate layer again the intermediate layer can be of two types it can be metallic or non metallic if it is metallic then we go for thermo compression or eutectic okay if it is non metallic uh, then it can be of glass fret type or adhesive the details are given here all the details okay you can read through it and this is the image of a anodic bonded glass wafer and if you read through this you will understand that uh, it is the best way to uh, do the bonding of glass with uh, silicon is using anodic bonding so we can see anodic bonding this is uh, some image and this is how anodic bonding can uh, can be done there will be some top electrode 
then glass will be kept and then silicon and the silicon will be connected to an odd positive and the top electrode is negative so what happens is that there will be some uh, current like uh, like there some uh, field will be there from positive to negative okay and when there is a field the ions present will try to move okay and in case of glass there are sodium ion this is generally soda lime glass uh, so there will be more purposefully there are more sodium ions okay and uh, under this effect what happens is that at the interface there is uh, vacancy of uh, sodium ions because they will try to move towards the negative since it is positive ion. okay and this reaction occurs a, a, like you can say silicon dioxide is the thing that is actually doing the bonding here oxygen ions are there silicon is there and they try to make silicon dioxide so a thin layer of silicon dioxide forms and that acts as the uh, adhesive between them okay so this is uh, one of the most commonly used uh, way of bonding uh, just <laughs> there is, uh, this is the common way of bonding glass with silicon okay uh, these are the apparatuses used uh, use. uh, yeah this i think uh, this is from yeah this is from siri siri lemon yeah so they are using uh, such kind of apparatus for anodic bonding okay so the answer will be anodic bonding okay RCA cleaning is uh, RCA refers to Radio Corporation of America. Of America, and it was named like this because uh, the person who uh, made this, uh, in fact, uh, this cleaning process was standardized by the Radio Corporation of America. And that is why it is even called as standard cleaning. Standard cleaning one and standard cleaning two. These are like there are two parts in RCA, RCA one, RCA two. They are also called as standard cleaning one and standard cleaning two. So don't confuse if they, somewhere it is written as SC one and SC two for standard cleaning process. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, before going to the perfect answer, let's discuss what are different cleaning processes and when are they used okay so uh, when we talk about the contaminants or wafers there are actually three type of contaminants on a wafer one is organic the other one is inorganic and the third one can be metal ions okay the most dangerous or 
the most uh, most uh, problematic ones are this metal ions and the second most one uh, second problematic ones are organic why organic as are very abundant because even a small mishandling will result in organic contaminant like uh, your fingerprint or any other uh, if uh, it is exposed to some human uh, trace it can contain organic and metal ions are the ones that are there in the wafer like they might be present so to remove organic residues piranha cleaning is the one that is used piranha uh, like uh, it is based on the name of the fish in which uh, which can eat anything eat out anything and this also acts very like very much like that h2so4 which is a acid and h2o2 which is a very strong oxidizing agent okay they are used together and this uh, this is very uh, vigorous reaction like it will make a hot uh, hot solution in which if you put even if you put your uh, any bone or anything it will eat it out and that is why it is called as piranha and it is used to clean okay but this is mostly used to remove organic residues and whenever we have a uh, like these are the details you can see more okay i will be sharing the slides anyway so uh, but this is when we have some organic contaminant but when a new wafer comes it can contain metal or organic both okay and R uh, rca rca process have two steps rca1 and rca2 rca1 will remove all the organic compounds organic components organic contaminants and rco rca2 can be used to remove metal ions so this is the standard one that is commonly used it can remove both the types okay in rca1 nh4oh and h2o2 and water it removes organic uh, the ratio will depend on the severity of the cleaning required what kind of wafer it is what is the quality of the wafer that you are getting and then once this is done rca2 that is hcl and h2o2 and water this will remove metal ions from the surface of the wafer and how will you know that uh, the wafer is cleaned this is uh, a very common thing that uh, we don't understand uh, there are some standards like for 2 minutes 3 minutes you will get put or for 30 seconds 50 what is the time that is fine but how will you actually know that the wafer is actually clean so by looking at it you can say uh, not in the sense that uh, you can see what are the contaminants there but yes you can uh, say that uh, it is clean but if you take it out and nothing is on it like uh, no water droplet nothing everything uh, everything goes out what why is this because in general we have silicon dioxide a thin layer of silicon dioxide forms on the surface of the wafer and while while cleaning that layer gets removed and silicon dioxide is hydrophilic and silicon is hydrophobic so when that layer goes out water cannot uh, water cannot be seen on the wafer and that is the best way to determine that the silicon wafer is cleaned okay so after these uh, two processes you will see that the water does not stick on it it just goes away okay so the correct answer is rc clearly okay so let's move on to the next problem any questions in this which of the following statement is true the 110 plane in silicon wafer h is much slower than 100 and 111 planes when exposed to wet agent remember in the previous class also we talked about uh, the angle between 111 and 11 uh, sorry 110 and 100 plane what is the angle and uh, which plane is used as the h stop plane okay uh, so you can answer from that the second one is the plane the 111 plane in silicon wafer h much slower than the 
110 and 100 plane when exposed to wet, wet agent or the 100 plane is slower which one is the slower do you remember And uh, this property of uh, selectively etching different uh, planes uh, by the wet agent is used as the, as a very useful tool to stop the edge. Like the profile itself uh, will get created itself. Okay, so actually it is one one one. The one 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 plane in silicon wafer etches much slower than one one zero or one zero zero plane. So one 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 plane will actually act as an edge stop plane. Like uh, when the etching will go till the 111 plane and once that stops uh, once that is made it will stop there so that is why you you see that a slanted profile is formed while etching and uh, in the previous class we found out uh, i think previous to previous class here yeah, we found out the distance and the anisotropy of the wet etching okay you can revise that which of the following is or are not the properties of SU8 pillar? Do you know SU8? What is SU8? It is a negative photoresist. Yes, very fine. Yes, now your sound is also coming. So SU8 is a negative photoresist, and along with being a negative photoresist. It have other purposes also like uh, it is used in many other uh, as uh, like as uh, as creating a tank and other thing a tank for this uh, bio uh, bioreactions and these things it is used a lot okay <laughs> so which of the following is not the property of su8 pillar it is heat resistant has low resolution, low sensitivity, low edge resistance. Is it a low resolution? Low resolution. Because it has actually. It is high. Okay. Yeah. So, oh. low resolution. It has high resolution. High right? resolution. It has a uh, very high resolution, and that is why it is. Yeah, this one will be wrong, like low resolution. And it is actually very sensitive. It has a high sensitivity as well as high edge resistant. Why why this is required? Because once SU8 is formed, SU8 uh, cannot be etched with any other material. We want that it remains intact. Like suppose we created a tank kind of structure and in which we have our electrodes like this. And we want that we will put our electrolyte here, uh, like electrolyte or whatever uh, is our analyte here. So we don't want that any analyte actually etches this away and flows out. And that is why it is, it is actually highly etch resistant. And that is the reason that we cannot, uh, that is the reason that uh, we cannot ac actually uh, directly uh, use this. Uh, like to make this uh, SU8 uh, pillars or SU8 uh, structures, it is not easy by uh, is not easily done by using the conventional method of lithography. Like we cannot directly have some etchant for it, and that is why mostly uh, some uh, this is used uh, negative uh, since it is already negative photoresistor, so lift off is easier also. So that is used for this <coughs> so actually low re resolution low sensitivity and low resistance these are the incorrect ones okay so it is highly heat resistant it is edge resistant have high sensitivity and high resolution and what is the difference between a cancer cell and a normal cell they divide irreparable uh, like they divide keep on dividing whereas normal cells do not divide cancer cells uh, do not exhibit variability in cell size compared to normal cells 
cancer cell do not differentiate after division whereas normal cell differentiate or normal cell do not undergo angiogenesis like cancer cell yes any answer But the uh, first part of the first statement is correct, right? The cell, cancer cell divide irrepressively. You cannot control them easily. They will keep on dividing. But uh, this part, normal cell do not divide. This is wrong. Normal cells also divide, but uh, they have uh, contact inhibition and these things. They will divide up to a limit only. Cancer cells do not exhibit as much variability in cell size compared to normal cell. Okay. Is it correct or wrong? <laughs> they uh, vary in size, but they don't differentiate. That is actually the uh, best thing that they don't differentiate like uh, our normal cell will differentiate according to purpose like they will become uh, like according to their position they will have different function and they will differentiate but cancer cells they can have different sizes shapes also but uh, they will have no differentiability they will uh, all have same functions like the internal structure will be same so This is wrong. This is fine. But normal cell do not undergo angiogenesis like cancer cell. This is also wrong. Why? Normal cells actually go for angiogenesis where they differentiate into uh, this pulmonary veins and other things. Okay. Vessels actually. Uh, so normal cells actually make uh, pulmonary vessels. Whereas cancer cells don't, they actually, they actually block that uh, pulmonary vessels. So the correct answer is, the uh, cancer cells do not differentiate after division. They will grow, keep growing, but they will not differentiate into uh, different functions, and that is why they block uh, the flow of blood and other things. Which of the following is a good prognostic factor in detecting breast cancer prognostic means where we can find out uh, the early like early detection of the breast cancer tumor grade 3 lymphatic and vascular invasion tumor size or er positivity miss any answer I am audible. Hello. Hello. I am audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. Um, so, any answers for this? Not sure, but is it uh, the last one that the ER positivity? positivity? Yes. Not sure, but just yes. a little bit confused. Yes, certainly. This is uh, the correct answer. Here we are talking about prognostic factor. That means we want to know before like it has advanced okay so the first option that is tumor tumor grade 3 that we don't uh, we cannot go for that certainly because t uh, grade 3 is already a very advanced stage okay lymphatic and vascular invasion this also occurs in an advanced stage tumor size this also like these are the factors then that can be used to detect cancer but all of this they happen at a advanced stage 
बट ई आर पॉजिटिविटी इज समथिंग ई आर पॉजिटिविटी मीन्स एस्ट्रोजन पॉजिटिविटी ओके वेर दे रिएक्ट टू एस्ट्रोजन रिसेप्टर्स ओके एंड दिस वन दिस विल बी अ टाइप ऑफ दिस बायोमार्कर बायोमार्कर टेस्टिंग there are uh, like there are three type of biomarkers for especially for uh, this cancer uh, er pr and i think her2 yeah so uh, if uh, the cells are responding to estrogen estrogenic receptors uh, it is called as er positive and that can say that yes uh, it's an early stage or the beginning of a breast cancer okay what is the advantage of having a diaphragm structure in the microheter structure uh, in the microheter structure we talked about something where we can create uh, such kind of structure like this is silicon and from the below we have etched using bulk micro machining and on it we are creating the microheter structure okay so what is the advantage of this uh, diaphragm kind of structure low power consumption high power consumption no additional advantage or high resistance any answer yes any answers you can try not an issue even if you are wrong it's fine we can discuss okay is it uh, high power consumption huh? no no sorry it's a advantage so it won't be high power then yeah. then it could be low power just it's a because i'm not aware of the theory but advantage yeah. of my product so high power won't be the advantage as yes, well as high resistance won't be बट हाई रेजिस्टेंस विल बी एन एडवांटेज इफ वी आर टॉकिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ हीटर लाइक having a high resistance is something that helps heater like if it is having high resistance it will give more heat as output right like uh, okay. uh, that is why uh, high resistance for case of a heater it is an advantage but it is not due to the diaphragm okay so low power consumption is the right answer and why low power consumption because you see if this whole structure was there like uh, the heater is on the top below it we have a thick structure and we don't we are not interested in heating that structure below we are just interested in heating heat on the surface on the top surface okay so having a very thick uh, supporting layer will actually take out a lot of heat in it also like the heat will go down also it is not just heating in the on one side any filament or it is structure will have uh, like uh, it will be dissipating heat on both the sides and if we have a thick structure below it will be taking a lot of heat and silicon is uh, a very good uh, thermal conductor so actually it will take out the heat and easily uh, like it will easily dissipate dissipate it and that is the reason a diaphragm like a structure is formed and when the diaphragm like a structure is formed for the same amount of uh, voltage when the heat will be produced that heat will not go out and after that uh, using anodic bonding what we are doing is that we are covering this like we are using glass here so what happens is that there is air uh, trapped inside and this air is 
insulator insulator thermal insulator right so the heat will now not be dissipated below yes yes it is recorded system so so we'll get it later on yes it's uh, uh, all uh, because i could not uh, attend the previous one session yes, so yes, anyhow now onwards i'll be attending so i just yes thought all i'll the ask sessions, you sorry uh, to at, interrupt you yeah not an issue and in fact uh, at the last i just remind me once i will be sharing the link again like uh, okay there is a link uh, youtube channel you can find all the previous recordings also okay okay thank you so much sir. yeah so in this uh, area air is uh, trapped and that air acts as a good insulator so the heat will not go down and in that way actually we are saving a lot of power and that is why low power consumption is there due to this diaphragm like structure high power consumption anyway will be a disadvantage okay and uh, high resistance will be an advantage and for that what we do is that we try to make a very thin structure uh, since uh, having a thin structure will have good resistance but uh, along with that it might melt that is why some uh, like some balancing has to be done whether it has to be how much thick and what will be the resistance as well as uh, the other option is using high resistance material like uh, we will be discussing i think there is one question related to that okay so low power consumption is the correct answer yeah this is the question what is the material used for a microheater chrome gold silver tungsten or nichrome yes i am aware nichrome is used yes nichrome is used <laughs> yes yeah in fact uh, this i think we have studied in uh, our school science books also right yes yeah so uh, nichrome which is uh, an alloy of nichrome and chromium this is a very common one used and this is in fact used even in the i think uh, nowadays they are, uh, they are not that common uh, this heater was used in our homes earlier electric heaters they had coil based heating system and that coil was also made using nichrome so nichrome is the one that is used to make microheaters sometimes according to application uh, some people even go for uh, if they have to go for very high range of temperature they even go for pt or pd platinum or palladium uh, they will have uh, they will not have very high resistance but uh, they will have something that is very high heat tolerance so that in that case what i was talking about that uh, we will have to go by critical dimensions we, uh, the dimension will play the role more compared to the resistance like uh, the material resistance because they will have uh, lower resistance compared to maybe uh, compared to nichrome and other but uh, they are doing this uh, like by varying the thickness and others these are uh, these are <laughs> these are taken care like the resistance is increased because they have good uh, thermal tolerance but nichrome is the one common uh, the common one like uh, we can go till 200 around 200 300 degrees celsius we can go using nichrome i think even a bit less than that i, I don't remember exactly okay so what are the advantages of using microheater in medical devices why we are using microheater low power consumption high sensitivity fast response to change in supply yes any answer is it a again because low power consumption is there yes, it's a okay. direct uh -huh. yes and this is fine, fine yes and any other answer like uh, okay you you are attending my class for first time i think yeah sir because i could not attend so i am feeling very bad, like no, sorry no, for that but no no this i just guess because stay the problem number 10 we discuss the diaphragm na so yeah, it, yeah. as it is the diaphragm is a part of yeah. microheater so here the low power consumption it's yes. a i haven't read but this is what i yeah. guessed it so just this a linking between one yeah uh, and there can be uh, yeah that is why i was saying that uh, i generally take uh, some questions 
which can have multiple answers like uh, more than one can also be correct okay. so this is one of them okay so low power consumption but uh, when we uh, look uh, at first that since we are uh, like if we have a id pattern actual sensing occurs in this id pattern and we have some material that is uh, like and then we have some material that will respond to the uh, the change okay so this itself will have some power supply plus minus some volt and then uh, along with that we are using a heater below it so looking at first it looks like we are using an extra circuitry and we are giving extra uh, heat and this thing so actually it looks like it will have higher power consumption but what happens is that if we are able to heat this area first thing is it will have low power consumption in the sense this voltage will decrease drastically the sensing voltage will decrease we can go with lower sensing voltage and we will be able to get good results the second one is high sensitivity why high sensitivity because if you are doing some experiment at room temperature like uh, in that case the ions or the other material that are playing uh, will play a role in the sensing they might be in a very stable state when we have heated it they are in active state so our sensing is very easy and it gives very good results compared to the room temperature sensing so this also is an advantage and the third itself uh, is conveyed that faster response since they are in active state they will very easily respond to changes so in fact all the three are correct okay any doubt still here okay. what are the three modalities of tissues that can be studied using a mems biochip to diagnose breast cancer so uh, like as discussed in class also there are uh, the basic modality that is used to detect uh, tissues uh, this uh, breast cancer tissue is using biomarkers and uh, there are three biomarkers we were using er positive pr positive and her positive HER2 positive. Along with this, what are other things that uh, like which we can use to detect cancer tissue? And that uh, we can detect using the MEMS based sensor. Any idea? Yes, any idea? See, in addition to the basic uh, three things, we can have the electrical, mechanical, and thermal pro Like, we can detect the electrical, mechanical, and the thermal properties of the tissues. They will have variation from the normal cells. Like, uh, if we have uh, a normal tissue, like, I'm just trying it like this. So we have a normal tissue and we have one uh, cancerous tissue. Okay. So till now what has been done is that the standard process was uh, putting them uh, in estrogen, progesterone and these things and then testing their response to that. But an uh, easy way uh, is that they will actually have uh, the variation the variation in electrical mechanical as well as thermal property like so this was no, no, this. first is the elasticity elasticity of the normal tissue and the cancerous tissue varies so this this comes under 
mechanical properties okay so elasticity will have uh, the effect of uh, like uh, we can go by uh, using the, some piezoresistive material and this that uh, having more elasticity will have uh, different current flowing through it or different uh, current produced from it the second one is their thermal conductivity will vary the resistance uh, uh, the, uh, the resistance of uh, both the electrical resistance of both the type of tissues is also different and these three properties can easily be used in mems biochip to diagnose breast cancer tissues okay fine now let's come to the next question why do we need sio2 layer between id and heater so just now i was talking about like there is a heater and above it we put a silicon dioxide we cover it with silicon dioxide uh, let me draw it with some other color we put silicon dioxide above it and then over it we are making the id pattern to detect our tissues okay so what is the significance of this silicon dioxide layer between id and heater this any guesses any answers is it acting as a insulator so that yes sir whatever not sure but <laughs> no no continue this uh, fine yeah it's acting as an insulator it is quite obvious from seeing it that uh, it will yeah yeah it will separate these two structures right so it is acting as an insulator this is very right in fact this is the purpose and then there is one more purpose that okay. to uh, do uniform heating like it will be able to dissipate the heat throughout the area like uh, uh, i think in question 2 also i discussed that so this layer will actually lead to uniform heating of this area as well as uh, the primary objective is that to separate to insulate okay so that there is no sorting like whenever we are putting the analyte or the tissue they will not actually lead to sorting of the heater heater and heater is below okay as well as the id pattern will also actually sort it that is why we are putting sio2 layer and sometimes uh, silicon nitride and other things but sio2 is the most common one okay any uh, doubts still here okay let's move to the next question uh, a very uh, very uh, crucial type of uh, cancer like which is a uh, very dangerous one was discussed in the class and which is carcinoma okay is a cancer involving which type of tissues embryonic epithelial connective or bone tissue yes any answer no not one uh, actually i i am not uh, very comfortably able to see this uh, message so you just unmute and you can speak okay i have to switch the screen every time to see the messages 
that uh, bone is not the correct one uh, bone have different uh, different type of cancer it is epithelium and this is uh, more dangerous because it uh, occurs in the epithelial cells that is the outermost cells uh, it outermost tissues of any organ uh, like uh, almost the highest uh, all the surface area of our body outside inside all the organs they have epithelial tissues and this is uh, a very uh, dangerous kind of cancer and it is known as carcinoma okay can the cancer diagnostic tool used in class uh, that is <coughs> sorry. the cancer diagnostic tool that is uh, discussed in class is the mems based uh, biochip mems biochip will it be able to detect triple negative breast cancer so first uh, let's discuss what is triple negative breast cancer any idea no sir no okay so remember i talked about uh, three biomarkers first yes. one was er and hr yeah er pr and hr2 if there is a tissue that did, uh, that is a uh, cancerous tissue but still it uh, it does not pass in all three of this okay that is called as triple negative breast cancer okay so by using this con conventional method we cannot detect so will our mems based biochip which is based on this uh, which is having a heater id pattern and this uh, do you think it will be able to detect such kind of uh, tissues if the uh, depending on what was the discussion we had i think yes because there are the electrical thermal so based on thermal we can go ahead with that yes certainly so since we are not uh, depending on biomarker here we are depending on other properties like uh, we are depending on this uh, thermal electrical and one more what we were depending on mechanical mechanical that is the elasticity okay so we can easily go for these methods and we will be able to detect okay what trans transduction scheme is used in the mems biochip to detect the mechanical property of the tissue transduction when we talk about transduction what it is the mechanism that is used to convert from one energy to another so what is the mechanism that is used to detect the mechanical property of the tissue is it the piezo one where yes piezo is right the next one yes complete the piezo what it is piezo electric piezo because piezo resistive and one is piezo yes you are going in the right direction but complete it something is still missing one is piezo electric other one is piezo resistive right yes. so which one among them mechan to detect the mechanical property so piezo electric piezo electric okay what happens in case of a piezo electric uh, material or a device uh when the force is applied mm -hmm. so the the charge it will compress so the what are the charges con, uh, converted it will generate the electric energy electricity mm -hmm. and what happens in case of piezo resistive in case of piezo resistive mm -hmm. sorry so the okay answer is piezo resistive in case uh, 
what happens is that in case of piezo resistor like uh, you can think of uh, a force being applied okay when we are talking about elasticity okay we are talking about like when some force will uh, okay r is equal to by a yes so such kind of device where we are uh, that here uh, we want to check the elasticity when we wanted to check the strength or uh, bearability of it then we can go for piezo electric right how much it can be how much is the strength applied or the force being applied okay but here we are talking about how much uh, stress it uh, it can withhold okay so we can go for piezo resistive okay any doubt till here okay yeah so yeah again we come to fabrication part okay why cannot we use wet or dry oxidation in lpcvd to grow silicon dioxide layer on nichrome for microheater so we have already made a microheater okay uh, like let's suppose such kind of microheater and then we go for silicon dioxide deposition but instead of the commonly used lpcvd we go for some other methods okay why and what is that method itself any idea yes no sorry is it p e c v d or a p c v d not confused p e c v d yes yes Because... continue p e c v d is fine we use p e c v d but why it is plasma enabled na so excuse see the the basic principle of cvd is that we are using heat yeah. we we are uh, using heat to activate the precursors the chemical reaction okay mm. so uh, like we will have it you we have discussed uh, it earlier also like you checked the previous video like we will have it tube and in that tube it is heated to 800 900 sometimes 1000 degrees also okay and then the chemical reactions occurs okay but in case of this like nichrome uh, earlier also i discussed that it cannot withstand very high temperatures though it is uh, something having a very good resistance but it is not uh, stable at very high temperature or any metal actually as a matter of fact will get melted or it will get sorted and all so all our uh, all our work will get wasted there okay so to avoid the heat in case of lpcvd and apcvd heat is there but in case of pcvd what happens is that uh, to reduce the activation uh, like uh, to get the to achieve the activation energy for the chemical reaction at a lower temperature at not exactly at room temperature somewhat like 50 100 something like that uh what we do is that we use plasma along with this heat so the plasma gives the activation energy and plasma is cold and that is why we can go for this process in which our uh, earlier structure that is the microheater will not get destroyed as well as we will be able to get sio2 but uh, why pcvd is not the common one like uh, when we talk about uh, this uh, silicon dioxide if there is no metal we go for lpcvd but uh, when we go for uh, when we want lower temperature we go for pcvd because there are two reasons that uh, lpcvd is more common first is it is faster 
having good step co coverage like it will be able to cover everything very well second one is it is less costlier than pcpd okay any doubts in this no sir okay. so since uh, high temperature will melt metal so we are using pcbd okay okay this is a very common uh, like what is a desiccator used for have you seen any desiccator or have you heard this term desiccator okay so it is uh, just a structure i think i should have put some uh, if you will search on the internet also you'll get uh, the images it is uh, such kind of structure like on the top there is some uh, lead lead and all okay it looks like a pressure cook, uh, pressure cooker okay um, small and big other tef made up of teflon and it will have a nozzle kind of structure here that can be opened and closed and we uh, create a vacuum inside it okay and it is uh, since you have not you are not aware of it certainly you will not know what it is for uh, inside it we store the uh, wafers mostly uh, storing wafers substrate as well as uh, our sensors okay when they are not being used or when it is in the process of um, being fabricated like uh, some step has been done other has to be done it is kept inside it and a vacuum is created why so that it does not get uh, contaminated from anything outside as well as no moisture is there since uh, there is vacuum there will be no moisture nothing uh, nothing will destroy it okay so it is used to store substrate in vacuum fine okay su8 is a negative photoresist area of wafer covered with su8 when exposed to uv light will the exposed area will harden soften remain same or cannot be determined it is softer okay it will soften so now like let's understand this that it is this area this complete area is covered with su8 okay and it is negative photoresist right then uh, suppose i have a mask like this uh, some structure like this and then let's no. and then i expose it using photolithography so all the area except this has got exposed right so uh, after this we will develop okay so if it is softened which area will get removed the area that was under this uh, let me put this to as a and this area other area is b so a will be removed or b will be removed so a will be removed but we want uh, to keep it right so no then the answer we, we are not wanting anything yes uh, if a is uh, like which area is the okay. first let's uh, discuss a area a is exposed or b is exposed sensitive photo yeah what you are saying no i'm just uh, thinking myself that su8 is a negative photo resist and we are as no, the area uh, a, yeah the let's, mask for, and... let's forget uh, that part first let's come to uh, when we are exposing it the whole area this area a is only covered and we are putting light over it so which area is exposed a or b 
then b will be because a is covered right yes so b is the exposed area now this is a very common thing people get confused uh, till they actually do the lithography this is something very confusing in fact uh, everyone gets confused including including me now since i have done a lot of lithography so now i know because every time i come up with questions i remember what was uh, the thing that happened in the like what i did okay so uh, just to remember that positive okay exposed area will area is removed okay and negative exposed area remains this is something that uh, if you remember okay you will not get confused in positive photoresist or even easier for that the positive one pattern remains whatever pattern you have made that remains so what is the pattern here a or b what is the pattern a is the pattern a is the pattern no? so in case oh, of oh. yes it is fine a is the pattern and in case of positive the pattern remains in case of negative pattern gets removed okay so what will be the correct answer here which one will get removed since this is a negative photo list, which one will get removed pattern so a part will be removed a part will be removed so with exposed area is b and it will remain so will it be soft or hard expose area is us okay sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. so it will be hardened or softened uh, it will be hardened because it has to remain right okay so if you remember this in mind that positive is something common when we are thinking hmm. about uh, positive so whatever we want to make we make a pattern for it that hmm. is the positive one negative hmm. one is whatever we want to make we make a pattern opposite of it hmm. okay so you will not get confused so in this case it will harden okay this is a very confusing that is why i put uh, like in every lecture i put one two question related to this uh, photo is positive negative and bright field light, uh, and uh, dark field okay this is something that people easily get confused so for negative one it is hardened okay wherever the light falls it will uh, have some reactions for every photoresist there are different set of reactions uh, if whenever you buy the photoresist along with that if you search for the data set of it you will get what kind of reactions are happening and in fact uh, if you go in details of the photoresist there are three components in it resin and different things like su8 is mostly uh, like it is mostly resin only okay but it will have something that is uh, that is uh, uh, what you can say that will react with uh, the light okay then there will be something binder that will actually keep this together and this thing so these are purposefully made uh, to have different function and in this case uh, like if this area will remain okay so what we can do is that we can go for lift off like this uh, that we will have a depth at that so like if at the place where we want to make pattern there is a trench okay and when we uh, suppose we are depositing metal on it how the metal will get deposited uh, suppose this is the metal so metal will get deposited here 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 like this okay and next when you remove this uh, photo is when you are this is photoresist this is photoresist this is photoresist and then so this is the wafer are you able to see this image this is our wafer okay 
this is visible yes yes okay so such kind of structure if we want to make it is not that uh, if i have made a pattern and that gets dissolved so what is the use of it it is not like that sometimes we purposefully also do that and why it is done like in this case when we will remove this uh, photo resist we will be left with our pattern so we will deposit metal in the whole area after in this case what happens lithography is done first and then metal deposition in other cases uh, metal deposition can be done first if you are using positive photo resist or like that metal deposition first and then uh, lithography in that case you will have to etch out the metals in this case you will have to remove the photo resist and along with that whatever is on the top of it it will automatically get removed but here the problem is that this metal thickness can never be uh, more because it has to be lower than the thickness of the photo resist fine any confusion okay. in this then, uh, okay no then uh, as you said that if it is a positive photo resist material then metal deposition first followed by photo no. lithography it it is not uh, always right because if suppose i made a structure which is uh, i made a mask which was exactly opposite of this then i can do the same thing using a positive photo resist also okay. right if i make a mask which is covered fully covered and only the area that i want is open mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. in that case i can do the same thing using photo resist uh, positive also okay okay right like uh, it can be in fact uh, at present i am doing that only with using a positive photo resist i am doing this process so it is not always true but this is the general one that people do okay that uh, if they are using negative photo resist they will generally do yeah, what they will do is that they will first uh, first do the lithography and then go for this uh, metal deposition and this process itself is called as lift off this is a special term called as lift off because metals and we directly lift off using uh, this pr stripper okay lift off yeah lift off uh, if you search uh, also you will yeah, yeah, lift off. Yeah, you will get it. Okay, so it will harden. It will not soften. Okay. Mm. Okay. Now select the correct combination. If uh, this is about transduction, okay. Input energy is electrical. Output energy is mechanical. The material properties electro strictive. Is it uh, true? False. Second one, like we will discuss one by one. Okay. Okay. Second one is like input energy is magnetic, output is thermal. Okay. Uh, like you can say there is a magnetic field, and yes. Uh, no. 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 There is nothing like that magneto resistance okay yeah. no then input energy is thermal so uh, we are putting some heat or something and then we are getting some electrical property and is this it pyroelectric this is correct right and then the uh, d is input is mechanical energy like some force or we are maybe stretching straining something like that and we are getting magnetic field out of it is it magneto restriction no this mechanical to magnetic it may be but i'm not sure okay so let's keep it in doubt a not sure no right. okay. uh, electrical and mechanical yes yeah. so a is correct okay okay if you are giving some electrical property and the shape of that sometime it happens that uh, if you put some electrical field the shape of the material will change that is known as electro strictive okay but what is okay. magneto resistance the change change in resistance 
com, uh, corresponding to an electric field okay mm. uh, like electric field that is due to the magnetic field so if there is a magnetic field it will have different resistance different uh, f- uh, amount of magnetic field will lead to different resistance and that is called as magneto resistance pyroelectric is correct right then what is magneto restriction the property of magnetic material that uh, causes them to change their shape or dimension during the process of magnetization that means like when you are putting magnetic field the structure is changing okay so input okay. input is uh, input is magnetic and output is mechanical right and here it is input is magnetic output is uh electrical right you can just uh, see this but these two are correct okay yes okay so after this any questions so that in, uh, yes. in an exam let's take if such kind of questions are asked where two answers are correct and if yes. the like the candidate has selected only one mm-hmm. do they get like do uh, we get the marks for that general, or uh like what i am doing is that uh, in any such question it is generally given as combination of this like if these two are correct okay so you yeah. have an option like these are not the options they are the part okay. of the question okay. okay so it could be a or b or a or c a or c yeah. that yes. way okay yes okay. like that so anyway if it is multiple choice it will have sir and in case if it is having uh, multiple answers what i understand is that for every answer combinations like if, will yeah there will be some weightage the like options if, will be combinations yeah for every uh, correct answer there will be some weightage uh, like in gate and this uh, they do like mm-hmm. okay yes uh, so apart from this any questions related to this week uh, lecture or anything you are free to ask so that which uh, the t- angle you were talking na that 110 what yeah. exactly that concept can you just repeat it sir yes so what happens is that uh, how suppose, to answer that what uh, how it depends on that angle 110 plane that okay. 110 uh, you are aware of this uh, 100 plane 111 plane like that are you aware of it what is this plane mm, no, i have Units not okay well, yes. okay so if we are taking uh, like when we are talking about uh, latest structures okay so you see like uh, for a simple latest what happens is that a cube is the basic building block of it uh, it is x y z okay so a cube is the basic building block of a uh, latest right right it is yeah it is repetition of that so we i can say like uh, something like this will be formed this is our basic unit cell basic building block and this is the unit cell what is your background like uh, what is your major of study some instrumentation sir instrumentation okay so uh, you are a bit aware of these things unit cells and this yeah yeah, yeah yeah okay so suppose we are talking about 100 plane so 1 corresponds to 1 on x so it will be here okay uh, let me change the color let me change the color so one and what will this zero correspond to on y axis sorry y coordinate zero z coordinate is also zero and only x is one is it so no no sorry it is the inverse uh, reciprocal okay. of that okay uh, uh, so one is on x infinity on y that means it will not touch y oh, oh, oh. and on z also infinity so it is this plane actually right because uh, if if we go on extending this i am not very good in drawing this, this okay if we go on extending this it will not uh, touch and y this, or z yeah fine so this one is 1 0 0 plane now 
Uh, let me take another color for this. Okay. Now let's say what one one zero plane. Okay. So on x, what will be the value? Or one 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 will be zero. On x, what is what will be the coordinate? Inverse of one. That is one itself. Right. On y, what will be the value? Again, zero only inverse of one. Inverse of one will not be zero. It will be one. Uh, like reciprocal of one. Uh, it is uh -huh. one. Okay. Uh -huh. So we will have three coordinates like this. So a plane that is passing through this. Okay. Mm. This mm. is one 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 plane. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mm. Now, what is the angle between these two planes? That if if you uh, uh, like draw it properly with mm. uh, scale and you will be able to find. I think uh, it is thirty seven point some. I forgot the value. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that the during wet etching there are some chemical like KOH and this which will etch uh, these planes differently. Why? Because the molecular arrangement is such that one plane like in one direction it is favored it will be able to etch out very easily since it is a chemical reaction right but in other plane like whenever it is uh, coming from this side koh it will be able to take out this 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 atoms but it will not be able to take out this atom uh, like this atom it will not be able to take out this atom it will not be able to take out easily but it will be able to take out the other atoms. So what happens is that suppose we have a mask put here. Okay, we have covered it. Okay, and we have silicon. So what we are expecting that we are putting it inside a chemical which will etch silicon, but not this mask. So what is the ideal thing that we expect? This is uh, say. 100 silicon. So this plane, this plane is 100. Okay. So when we dip it inside a chemical uh, KOH, what happens is that it will start itching this very easily. But when it comes still here, like 111 plane, this will also have 111 plane this will stop here okay it will start etching it will remove this but once it reaches this 111 plane it will stop there okay, okay? so okay. it will not be able to take out more materials so when we see from the top if uh, this is from the side view if we had made a structure like this okay it was covered all things are covered this was was uh, only open okay this internal structure so we wanted a structure like this but what we will get we will be a slanted structure a bit curved a bit circular in nature actually and when we remove this actually we will get something like this structure like this okay this calculation, I think, uh, in week three we did. Okay, you just try to divide. Yes, that. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. okay, I'll read. I'll read. Yeah. Such kind of structure will come, and this is uh, a very important way to stop, like to automatically stop the etching process. Okay, that it will not over etch. What the maximum thing it can do is that this will keep on growing. Like uh, this stops, it will try, when it will try to take out things from here, some planes will uh, get dislocated and this will get a bit uh, shifted towards inside, but it will never go circular. Like ideally, if it was uh, kept in a uh, isotropic etching process, what will happen is that a circular kind of structure will be formed. But 
by the virtue of this process what happens is that we get a structure like this which is almost like a, the ideal structure we wanted we want a structure like this ideally so this one is much better than having a fully circular structure okay so this is the thing that we get we cannot get very ideally to get very ideal structures we go for other etching processes like deep RIE and this processes okay uh, any other doubt or is uh, is this clear or not i think i have uh, gone very fast it's all device and then if some doubts are there then in the next step probably yes I yes have. certainly you can yeah any other questions or you can even put a comment on the video uh, whenever i get time i can answer or uh, if you have some specific doubt i can even prepare some slide to explain in the next class okay okay, okay. so just uh, you will uh, you say na, you will provide some link for the previous yeah. sessions recording so yeah, can just, you just a minute start of the lecture i it. attending another you know, i'm uh, new to this course little bit so yeah, sure. would like to more conversion but i could not attend the previous session yeah, not yeah. and uh, that is the actual, actual purpose of this uh, live interactive session that if you are having any doubts this problem solving is uh, something that is fine but along with that uh, you can take a screenshot of this uh, this is the youtube okay. link okay okay and, i'll just start uh, yeah this is the meet link. Uh, this will okay. remain same throughout the course. Timing will remain okay. same. Okay. So, okay. Okay. IITJ. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, this this is the YouTube link at the link, at the rate we can speak. If you okay. Search, I'll do that. After the session, yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. And I'm noted on your email ID also. In case if I get stuck, then yeah. I'll just. Yes, you can mail me. Not an issue. Yeah. 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 And this this slide is also available on the NPTEL uh, that uh, in the NPTEL course. If you go at the bottom, you see there is something called live live interactive session. Okay. Ha, yeah, yeah. So if you click on that, uh, a separate seat will open. On that you can find uh, there are two t two TAs. One is taking on Saturday. Ha, yes, that's what I was uh, like getting the mails. One is on Saturday, and I guess one is on Tuesday. Yeah. So if Tuesday I'm I am taking. To just 6 to okay. 8 pm i am taking and uh, okay friday uh, this saturday someone else Stop. is taking okay 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 so okay. like you can attend both or whatever is your convenience okay okay so but both contents will be same no sir in both the meetings uh, no we are or like, different we are free to uh, like have uh, some changes in our own content okay okay, okay. like somewhat uh, similar content but we are free to experiment with it so okay it's, okay okay it's sure. not exactly same okay. similar will be there okay 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 so that's all any other questions or doubts no no sir. Okay. right now nothing is there in the next okay. like maybe next uh, tuesday i mean yeah sure okay, okay. thank you sir yeah, thank you so that's all see you in the next class